So in Photoshop, we were able to output a GIF and test it. In PhotoP, we had to make individual files for each layer as JPEGs, and then we brought them into gifmaker.me. Here they are uploaded, all nine in order. We can change the order if we need to, right? So we have that control within this. And then we can also control the animation speed. So 500 milliseconds is half a second. So I want to make it 333 or 300 would be 0.3 seconds, right? And then we can also control the size. This is basically the size I brought it in at. So 390 pixels. And we want to keep it at native size so that it doesn't have to upscale. And then we just say, create GIF animation. By saying repeat zero times, it means it's going to infinitely loop. And that's what we want. So you say create GIF animation, and then you scroll down, and then you download the GIF. So that's how we use an online tool to do what the timeline does in Photoshop. Now I should have downloaded to our downloads folder. And there it is. Bring it into my folder. Here it comes. I'm going to mark this red because this is kind of weird. And then notice how it's going to rename it. So this is, I'll call it, call this file an animatic test using GIF maker. And then we can preview it by opening it with a web browser. So just like I did with the Photoshop GIF. Remember, you don't need to even make an animatic for the requirements of this. It's just to show you the basics of animation tools. But you do need to have a rough sketch to work from. And if I open it in Chrome, you'll see it is very similar to what we created through Photoshop. All right. So that's how we animate. GIFs are great because you don't need any special program to play them. So as soon as you have an animatic, if you are going to do one, I would love to see you post that in Canvas along with your sketch. Because what's great is that GIFs can just be uploaded onto websites and they'll automatically start playing through at the timing that you have set for it. So you upload a, a GIF animation just like you would upload a still image. That's even true for like a slide presentation. Because all a GIF is, is like a stack of still images that have a timing built in. Okay, now I can use this animatic and I can decide, okay, what things make sense, what things need to take a little bit longer. Because I'm definitely going to need more than nine frames to show this happening. I think I need a little bit more time of the character moving and hardening, a little bit more time of the crack forming, and a little bit more time of the creature breaking out. So even if I added just one frame in between each of these established keyframes, those are called in-betweens, it's going to help tell that story. And then there's some aspects of it which I might want to lengthen out even longer. But this shows me the rough story and it shows me the process of how to make it. So now I've got those things saved. Now I want to think, okay, how can I finish this off? Because all I have is a sketch of the idea. And I've created three folders here that I recommend you guys think about. Inspiration are things that inspire your ideas. 
I'll just open one of them here. I am really inspired by the, the 70s, 1970s and 80s animation of Terry Gilliam, who is an American animator who, who uh, studied in California, worked in New York, and then worked in England with, with Monty Python, and then went on to be a film director. And the idea of taking kind of just a photo and then turning it into an egg, you know, that's my taking his inspiration and the kind of goofy looping animations he just did with, with photographic cutouts. But he would often add little subtleties in the shading and in the coloring that really make his work stand out. So I have all these inspirations. Then I have a folder which are references things I want to look at and try to imitate. So inspirations just kind of show you what, what you like and you hope your project will, will be similarly successful. But references are things you look at while you're making it to help inform a certain problem you're, you're trying to solve. It's not opening for me. So if you open a GIF in something other than a web browser, like if I just double click it and open it in preview, which is the standard image viewing program on any Macintosh. Come on. Then it will actually open as a sequence of images instead of as an animated file, because that's all a GIF is. It's a stack of images with an animation script embedded that plays it through at a certain time. But for reference, this can be really helpful. It shows me all the frames and I can look at each frame and see how it was done. So here we have a photo. This is of Vincent Price. He's made it all one color. So I think when I harden my creature and turn it into a quote unquote egg, I'm going to probably make it all one color. He does have red lips, so it's a nice touch. And then the crack goes down. And you can actually see the crack doesn't travel down the image. Instead, the crack is just there from the beginning. But it starts to widen up and separate. And once it separates, he has this beautiful purple gradation that makes it look like it's fully open and gives you the illusion that it's three-dimensional. And then these little demons start flying out. It's a nice transformation. Like a horrific pinata. And then the camera just travels with the demons and the head moves out of frame. But that can be a good reference to look at. As I'm trying to recreate a similar effect. And then I have a third folder, which is sources. And sources, this is why it has to do with compositing. Sources are like maybe the background I will use or something that will be the start of the background I will use. And gradations I might use inside the, the shell. And then you can even steal from, sources are things you actually clip pixels from and steal from. I probably shouldn't use the word steal, but you know how it is. And there's a Terry Gilliam animation here Come on that shows a transformation. And it's animated a little too fast, but I love this kind of popping off like a cannon of the head. And I'm wondering if I can steal that little cannon explosion effect. And maybe I can show you how you can composite with animated frames the same way you can composite with still photographs.
So those are my sources. Now using these sources, there's a major source that's missing, right? And my sources are gonna be part of my animation assets. And the main, main source I need is my character. And so I'm gonna to go to assignment two, and just like I needed a clean PNG cutout for my creature scape for the proving ground, I need that clean PNG cutout for my animation. So that's the animation asset I'm gonna start with. And then I also have this background. So I'm gonna start building my sketch, starting with frame one. So the first frame, it introduces the character on a setting, a blank warm color. So let's, uh, let's create frame one and I get to set up the resolution. So because these are animated files, they can only be shown on screens, but we also wanna be able to produce something that's printable. And the thing that's printable for our print portfolio is what's called a refined storyboard. So we wanna make sure we have enough resolution to print the refined storyboard at least eight by 10 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch. What we're actually gonna do is 12 by 12 inches at 350 pixels per inch, right? And our animation is gonna be uh, 1,200 pixels by 1,200 pixels, which is eight by eight inches at 150 pixels per inch. And why 150 instead of 72? That's because 150 is big enough for any kind of high def screen as well at at least eight by eight inches. So these are what we're gonna aim for. So if my GIF animation is gonna be eight by eight inches at 150, then I'm gonna set up my square within Photoshop or PhotoP to be that. So in PhotoP, it's pretty simple. I know it's been a while since I've demoed with PhotoP, since our exercises. Once it opens up, I can show you. It's very similar to Photoshop. So what we do is we open or we create a new file. So file new, and then we're gonna say we want it eight inches by eight inches, and the resolution, we want 150 pixels per inch. Let me make sure that that's what I have in the directions. Eight inches by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. This will be for each individual frame. Background, just white, RGB color, 8-bit, all the defaults. I'm going to close the timeline because this is not a timeline file yet. So I'm going to go to Window and uncheck Timeline. And then I'm going to immediately save it as... These, this will be my Assets folder. So I'm going to say... RL assignment three, animation assets as a PSD file. I'm going to save it to the desktop. Confirm it's there. This is where I'm gonna build all the different frames that I need with lots of different layers. First is gonna be this warm gradient background. I can take from my sources. I can hold down shift and stretch it. This file's from Pixabay. It's plenty big. It's something like 3000 pixels in both directions and I don't need that many. Okay, so I've got that, but maybe I wanna change it. So if I rasterize it, then I can direct, do direct adjustments to play with the color. I'm gonna play with color balance. I'm gonna put a little bit more warmth into it, make it look a little bit more retro in 70s. 